he was the only one on earth at that time, according to the Bible, that the hundredfold came to. Mm -hmm. So then God could flow through him. So Isaac was the first one like that we see in the text where like this hundredfold is unveiled. Like all of a sudden, like we hearing, we hearing this dimension of reaping for sowing. Like, because in Adam's day, we never see in Genesis that it's mentioned a hundredfold. Not one time. We never see it. So, here's the profound thing. The hundredfold was hidden in continuous sowing. Adam didn't continue sowing because he got interrupted. So, with him getting interrupted, we never saw this episode in this dimension of reaping. Because he didn't see the end of the finish line. He didn't get there. So imagine we only saw about the hundredfold because Isaac got into that realm of sowing for God to unveil that which was hidden in continuous sowing. What is going on when the hundredfold and the, the hundredfold in the same year that Isaac received? What was really happening? Number one, Isaac had all of his angels unemployed. They didn't have jobs. So he was in a famine and the land was in a famine. The plan of Satan was prevailing in these people's life and his. Now, meanwhile, he has a different knowledge than them. So it's a disservice when God is watching him included in the famine with them because he has a different knowledge that could stop famines and to cause the provision to keep on flowing. So watch this here. He repents. He comes back to sowing and then the famine stops for him and continues for them. So there's a lot to take out of this. How did the famine keep on going and he exited out of it? What exited him out? Was it the fact that God loved him? Because God loved him before, before, when the famine was happening. Was it because he was chosen by God? No, because he was chosen by God and the famine was still happening. So how did it stop for him? He started continually sowing. The hundredfold wasn't in a seed being sown. It was in seeds being sown. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So nobody was able to even unveil this dimension of the harvest in their time because the level of sowing that Isaac did was unique and one of a kind. It was spectacular and it brought forth the manifestation of this dimension called the hundredfold. The hundredfold was a place where angels got their job back. They got rehired. Mm -hmm. They was unemployed, son. They had no job description in activation. Mm -hmm. They was on the unemployment list. And when Isaac started sowing, they got back their job and they started on their workforce in heaven. Son, the Bible said that Jacob had angels ascending and descending on a ladder. It's called Jacob's ladder. But Jacob had that happen after he was in what? Continuous sowing. So he saw angels bringing to him materials and inheritance. <laughs> angels are carrying events. That's why you see in Daniel chapter 10 in different parts of Daniel. Notice the angel comes with an answer for Daniel, gets stopped by the Prince of Persia. But what is the answer all about? It's a series of harvests for Daniel's life. When angels come into your life, if they come to you, they are carrying events of you meeting people, you experiencing money, you experiencing healing in your body. That's why when Jesus saying that the angel will come down every year in the, in the gospels and trouble the waters and whoever drunk, jumped in first, they got healed. 
So the angel was carrying the event of healing. Angels carry events of harvests. They carry the events of harvests. And so why wasn't Isaac in the hundredfold all this time? Because he had no sowing going on. There are people right now, you're not going to live the life that you was created to live. It don't matter how much you talk and you affirm yourself, you're not going to live it because you live in that life is in you sowing. And those angels, they, their job description is connected to your seed. I was asking Bennett, what keeps you sowing? What keeps you sowing? Be, be, yeah, go ahead, sir. When you asked me that, Papa, it was just the revelation of the seed being the beginning of everything. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. that God did from Genesis 1 all the way through the Bible is based on seed. Think about that. Think about that. He started off all creation from the fish to the whale, to the elephant, to the zebra, to the cobra, the chippecabra, no, not the chippecabra, um, <laughs> not the chippecabra, the German shepherd, all these things started off by seed. So even in the animal kingdom, animals are sowers. They are sowers and they see the harvest of their seed. And if a male dog enters into a female dog, she might come out with nine puppies. The seed level is different. Some come out with six puppies. Think about that. How? God made the seed to multiply. And I'm going to tell you something, son. The Lord is bored when he can't operate in seeing a sower around him. He's bored because he can't do nothing. He's the God of increase. Psalm 115, 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, 9, 10. He said that he multiplied the seed song. He don't even, a non-sower got God fired. Mm. What? Mm. A non-sower got God fired. You fire God from working in your life when you're not honoring him. You fire him. That's why it's on you. Every problem that come your way, you got to handle it. You get sick, handle it. You lose everything, handle it. Because if you wanted him to handle it, you would have used your hands to communicate that. You notice, how? When you hear handle, what, what is the phrase that you hear in handle? Hand. What, what you hear when you hear handle? I can't hear you. Hand. <laughs> what, what you hear when you say hand? Hand. Hand, right? Handle. What you hear when you hear handle? Hand. Ha hand, right? What, what you hear when you hear handle? Hand, Father. Hand. Just think about it. What you hear when you hear handle? Hand. Hand. <laughs> Hands on demand. <laughs> Just think about it. So, so, son, people, when they don't use their hands, they're telling God, I'll handle my life. I'll handle my enemies. I'll handle my sicknesses. I'll handle plagues that come into earth. I'll handle um, tough times. I'll handle betrayal. I'll handle all type of things that happen to me. So this is the message that man sent to God. You remember what Joel chapter 2 was all about. God said, I, now listen to this, y'all. God said that I have sent enemies against you, an army. The canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, the locust, four ranks of spirits to attack you financially because they wasn't sowing. So they went through all type of problems and God said, I'm the one that sent that army because you stopped honoring me. Just think about that. This is in the Bible. So when you hear, I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten. God is talking to people that he's saying, I'm restoring you because you repented and came back to sowing.
What's powerful about a soaring man? See, I, li I like sitting next to Bennett. I like sitting next to Bennett because as I'm watching him sow his way, it reminds me of myself. That's why I ask him, what, what keeps you sowing? Because, see, son, what kept me sowing was um, the truth behind the sowing anointing is that you actually have to become a seer of your seed's future transformation. Your seed um, is, is going to go through transformation surgery because you chose not to operate in pride. You get it? You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> So it's going through transformation surgery because you didn't choose to operate in pride. Right, right. You didn't choose no pride. You see? So, 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 watch this. Your seed it looks like it's this today, but tomorrow it's going to look completely different. <laughs> <laughs> you be like, I thought you was no, I'm 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 not that today. <laughs> I went through my transformation surgery. You see, you see, see that, see that. So, <laughs> so that that's the marvelous thing. You you have to. That's what what happens. See, son, when we meditate, what the Word of God says, Second Corinthians nine seven. You purpose in your heart to give. That means that this is a sacred moment where the sower is letting the Holy Spirit show them the future of the seed. That's why you never should just give because you pressure. Don't give because you see somebody giving. You need to purpose in your own heart. See, I'm going to tell you why people don't make it in sowing a lot of times. Because they're purposing out of someone else's heart. You saw them giving, and then you hopped on without a purpose in your own heart. When your seed can only work if you got a purpose in your heart, because that's where the Holy Spirit showing you what your seed going to become. People don't see what their seed is going to become. That's why you can stop sowing it. it. Let me tell you right now. If I know that this right here that I'm doing right here, say I'm up here cleaning carpets. If I know that I could see that it's going to bring me $5 million, would I stop cleaning carpets? So what stops me from cleaning the carpets is I no longer see the $5 million. If I know if I, if I eat this green apple, it will stop the cancer that's planned for me uh, 15 years from now. Meanwhile, I'm not giving you no instruction eating no green apples, all right? So I, I'll, I'm just using a random example, like real random. Um, so... If I eat the apple, would I stop eating the apple knowing that uh, it's going to stop the cancer that I'm going to have? No. So people are not purposing in their own heart to sow. And so you're not seeing what the seed is going to become because the Holy Spirit and you have no connectivity in your sowing. You just sowing because this is something that's conveniently active in your environment. You see other people sowing, you hear about sowing, bam. But you didn't purpose in your heart. The seed, that's, that's where we get um, the lukewarm sower. The lukewarm sower does not have heat about the sowing or coldness about the sowing. They're just going through the motion. And when you're going through the motion, you can't have promotion. What do you think about this, son? That's a deep revelation, Papa. When you were talking about that, I was, I was thinking about the, the one talent sower. Mm -hmm. When he was saying he saw that his master was a hard man. Yeah. So his vision of his future and what his master had for him was hard. And Jesus said, My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Mm. So he did he he was blinded from seeing the easiness of what the seed can bring. Wow. So he could not see what the seed was going to become in the future. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says he hid it from God 
which is what stops sowing in a believer's life. They can't see. So could you call somebody that's not sowing, could you call them a friend of God? How could you be a friend of a God that you don't have his traits? You can't see. And God himself is a seer. He's a visionary. What do you think about that, son? That there could be a veil over one's heart for the purpose that they will never live the hundredfold life and that was scheduled for them. Sometimes people don't even understand, son. God sets dates in a year, in a month, in which you're supposed to have an encounter with blessing. That, son, there are days that are set right now where God has said, this is a shopping day for you. Hmm. I'm going to take you shopping on this day. Not five days before, not three days before, not 10 days before, on this day. Son, people can't see. God has a set day when you move into your house that's destined for you on earth. And I, let me shock you, son. Every man, every woman has more than one house. You have houses and some of you all haven't even entered into the one house yet. You should be excited. Mm. Mm. Just think about it. You have not gone into the house that you're supposed to be in yet. Just think about it. With you not having that experience yet, it should arouse your excitement and it should birth a cheerful giver knowing, wait a minute, there's a vehicle that God has dreamed through me to drive. So I'm dreaming about driving in it, but it's really God just imparting the dream because I, that's a harvest anointing. The harvest anointing is where God imparts a dream to you that he has. For you to enjoy something. You think it's you. But the harvest anointing is imparting that brain flow in you. So that you can align yourself with what God wants you to enjoy. Sometimes people have dreams, son, to get a Lamborghini or get something, a Bentley or a big old mansion. Or even to have something like everything you name your seed will happen. And I'm going to tell you like this, even if God rebuke you and chasten you and correct you, he correcting you, he's testing you, he's molding you, but you're going to get the, you're going to get it if you let him refine you and try you. But the harvest anointing is where God starts to impart to Bennett what he wants you to have and enjoy because he already got it reserved to give it to you. And people. <laughs> People must understand that God must have a center in your brain daily where you're meditating the wealth of his response to you. Every day. He needs to see a place in every man and woman's soul where you have sanctified that place in your soul to meditate on what he is bringing to you. I, I, I'm going to say this lastly. You must have a place in your soul that is titled and labeled all other things that added unto me. Mm. That's big. Mm. Bennett got to have a place in his soul called all other things added unto me. You sanctify that place. Nobody could touch it. Mm. And you got to have an exercise every day of using that meditation muscle and thinking about all of the things added unto me. That's why your righteousness keep getting hindered. You see these presidential hands. That's why your righteousness keep, keep on getting hindered. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> because the, the, the righteousness of... <laughs> the righteousness that's supposed to spring up. Huh? It don't spring up, right? Because you're not having the meditation of all other things being added unto you. Any final words? <laughs> no.
<laughs> no. All right. <laughs> and and see, see, Ben, stretch your hands right here. Father, I release upon all sores and all people that endeavor to honor the presence of your holiness. I release harvests now in this new season, August 11th. You gave me the authority to declare this new season that you had for your precious people, our precious people here. And Father, as you have entrusted me as your apostle and prophet, I now release a series and episode of massive blessings to every sower. And I multiply your seed now. I release the blessing power of the spirit and the prophet's reward upon you. In the mighty and glorious name of Jesus right now, everybody in Jesus name, everybody touching the green, receive it right now.